everybody. It's the day before Halloween, and anybody who knows me knows I love steampunk. I love steampunk, and so tonight I thought I'd honor all of you by dressing in the steampunk way. I think it would be so awesome to have a steampunk event down here at Strong Island Studios. But anyway, I am Georgia Rose from Zencuda, and if you're tuning in for the first time, I am here every Monday night at 7 o'clock discussing all kinds of spiritual wisdom, guests who do spirituality and inspirational messages and stories, and also astrology, and if we have time, tarot cards. So tune in. I'm just going to share the show. If you're new or if you've been watching me for a while, you know that anything and everything can happen in this soul space. So I'd love for you to share the show so we pick up even more viewers. So join me in the soul space every Monday at 7 o'clock. So if you're tuning in for the first time, what is Zenkuda? Well, Zenkuda is living to your full potential. You know, a lot of times in life, people say that go-getters or hustlers are barracudas. Well, we're really serious about our Zen. So join the Zenkuda community and come on in with me. I know I look kind of weird with this hat. I wore this outfit out last Halloween <clears throat> and somebody thought I was Stevie Nicks. I'm like, no, because there's like a a scarf on the back of my hat, as, as all steampunk aficionados know. This is how you dress for steampunk. My goggles, I got my goggles on, my velvet, my lace, my metal. So, yeah, somebody thought I was Stevie because of the, the veil tied to the hat. And I was like, no, I'm steampunk, man. Jeez, what's wrong with people? So anyway, let me look at my comments. I see we got people on already, which is great. You know, I love you guys. I have so much to tell you because I did an event last Friday, which was such a cool event, and I want to share what happened there with you. And then also want to talk about the astrology because we have a brand new month going on. Um, this past weekend, I really didn't do a lot. The energy was very hectic and very um, challenging for me. I know there was a lot of chaos out in the world. I posted on the Zenkuda Soul Space site on Facebook a lot about the astrology and how the energy really was almost had like a violent signature. So I kind of laid low, but I was pretty much laid out for the count Saturday anyway, because after Friday's event, I, my energy level was definitely like a, maybe a four on a scale of one to 10. So I had to self-correct and take care. So I've got Janine on, I've got Marie on, Darlene on. Hey kids, how are you doing? So call in, comment, we'll get to you at some point. Last time on the show, I had, um, Kathy Marinelli Gagliano on, the author. For, uh, she wrote a book, um, A Mother's Intuition. She has two sons that she raised who are special needs. She's going to be on again November 13th because we had so many people calling in and tuning in. We couldn't even get to everybody. The phones were going crazy. So uh, watch for that. November 13th, Kathy's going to be back with me. We're going to talk a little bit more about her story. So inspirational, and it was just such a great time. So I hope you guys are all embracing your costumes for Halloween and getting yourselves all together, whatever your look is. Um, I love Halloween because it's a time we don't have to take ourselves too seriously, as you can see. So I want to talk first tonight a little bit about the astrology, and then I'll go into some stuff that I, you know, have been thinking about and doing and bounce off you guys. So first thing with the astrology, we're in a new month, November, as of Wednesday, and I will tell you that November is going to be a month for a lot of change and shifts. So whatever comes in, kind of flow with it, embrace it. You really want to be um, making sure that you are not resisting the change because these are changes that have been brewing for a long time. In November, we have some energy shifts and the energy does shift to a lighter energy in some ways. So whatever you've been working on, whatever's been revolving around for you, you're going to find some movement with that. The big movement is not going to come until the beginning of the year, but you're going to feel lighter this month in some regards. So I'm going to start out and give you guys some dates. If you want, you can always play the show back. The show is also banked on Spotify, my own YouTube site, Zencuda, Zencuda on YouTube, which has over 150 videos on there about all kinds of things, astrology, spirituality, everything. Zencuda.com is also the website. You can find some stuff. But um, I'm going to give you some dates. So if you want to write those down, you can. But you can also replay the show on any of those sites. So... I'm going to start with the 3rd, which is Friday, November 3rd. November 3rd, we've got the Sun opposing Jupiter. Now, the Sun is our life force. It's our vitality. And Jupiter is a planet that expands everything. So going into the weekend this week, you may find that you've got a lot more energy than you've had lately. Um, and that's going to really be a very high frequency. 
Jupiter is a planet that usually wants to give us some benevolence and some abundance. So it's a great time, um, Friday and over the weekend, to really focus on what you want and, because the energy will be allowed to be expanded. So this is a time when we can really manifest a lot, you know, our personal hopes and dreams and wishes. So come the weekend, definitely keep your thoughts pure, your thoughts positive, because when the sun opposes Jupiter, it lights up that energy of expansion and benevolence and goodwill. This may be a good time um, that you're going to see more in a situation that you've been going around about or ruminating about in your life. This can be a time when things really expand to be what you want. Um, you're going to see more truth, more detail in an energy like that. So this weekend coming up can really be an expansive energy. So utilize it for that. On the 4th, which is the following day, which is Saturday, Saturn then goes direct. Saturn in Pisces has been retrograde since June. That's an energy of a lot of limitation. So when that goes direct, you're going to see that the energy really shifts where you have some movement on some things that maybe you've found a lot of limiting belief systems or even authority limiting, limiting you. Like maybe you want to do a project at work and no one's on board and you feel limited. Or maybe you're trying to get your family on board and, and, and venture or a project and it's been kind of limiting and restrictive. Once Saturn starts to go direct this particular Saturday, it's going to expand that energy to a point where it'll loosen up a little bit. It's almost like if you can picture like a rubber band around a balloon and you can't blow it up further. Now that rubber band goes away as soon as Saturn starts to go into a more direct motion. This gives you clarity about something that's been happening in your life since June. So go back in your journals, your emails, your texts. Think about where you were at in June and what's coming in that's going to now maybe be a little more expansive and move forward. Something you're going to have a little more clarity on, you know, paying more attention to the details that'll move it forward. Um, this can also be rewards. Saturn is a planet of karma. It's a planet that usually brings karmic debt to the surface for us. So we have to like pay the piper or it can also be rewards if we've worked really hard at something. So that's this weekend. We start out with that beautiful energy of the sun and Jupiter, just high frequency and expansive. And then Saturn goes direct on Saturday and brings in the limitations that, are, that have been in play for a while, brings in the release of that. So it's really a nice time. And then on Monday, which is the 6th, we've got Venus trining Pluto. Venus and Pluto have been doing a dance all year long. But now what happens is... This is really about a change in relationships and a, a, a more of a balance of power. So this weekend is a very powerful weekend that comes up, brings us a lot of clarity, a lot of new energy, a lighter energy of restrictions being released. And then come Monday, we start to see the change in the relationships. All of a sudden, the power struggles that we've been in, they start to become a little bit more balanced. They're not through yet. But we're going to have some clarity about where we've been able to grow in the last couple of months with a lot of the tensions and a lot of the chaotic kind of, you know, craving of power and power shifts that have been happening. Now come this next week around the 6th, it's an energy that we're, we're compelled to claim our power. Wherever we've lost power, we're going to get our power back. Wherever there is not a balance or an imbalance of power, it's going to be corrected. So this is really about partnerships. Venus is in um, Virgo, headed into Libra, and it's really all about relationships. Pluto is power. So when those two planets trine each other, you're going to see Monday, and that energy will be with us for a week or two, and you'll see that that energy really builds up to correct any imbalance of power dynamics in personal relationships. And then come Wednesday, that's when Venus actually goes into Libra that sign of diplomacy, of fairness, of balance. You know, it's still in that kind of trine and that dance with Pluto. So now for the next few days, that really starts to balance out the power in relationships. This is where um, you find some of the tensions that came in for our recent eclipses easing a bit. But it can also be a major chain in, in relationships where things do fall away oftentimes. Because when Saturn goes direct and releases the limitation, it also allows people to move freely and find liberation. So in that regard, you may find some relationships falling away, whether you're the person who decides this isn't for me anymore, I need to be in a different place, or the partner uh, decides that. Really try and go with it, because when Venus trines Pluto, it's also an energy of meeting someone new. It has the potential for bringing new love and new values into our life. So especially with that happening just as 
Venus goes into Libra, which is the sign of relationships and balance and harmony, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people meet someone um, that develops into a relationship um, around that November 6th, 8th. So going on with the rest of the energy for November, that uh, November 11th, that Wednesday when we've got Venus moving into Libra, that's a really good time to clean up your space, redecorate, reset. It's a great time to redo your wardrobe. If you're going to get a haircut or your hair colored or any kind of cosmetic thing being done, that is a great time to do it when Venus goes into Libra anytime after um, November 8th great time to go, you know, get the renewal, get the makeover, anything that's aesthetic, beautiful is a great time for that. If you're going to get a tattoo or, or buy new clothes or paint your living room, that's a great time to do it when Venus is in Libra. Um, and also when Venus is in Libra, that's also a time when you're more open to finding common ground with someone. So that's why I say a lot of the tensions from the eclipses are going to be released a little bit in that energy. So that'll be really good. Um, I'm glad you like my Halloween. I'm steampunking tonight, my favorite era, even though it's a fantasy era. And then on November 10th, which is a Friday, we've got Veterans Day, and Mercury leaves Scorpio and finally goes into Sagittarius. That's going to really lighten up the energy for this second weekend of November. Um, when Mercury leaves Scorpio, where it's been very heavy and it had us really doing deep dives and thinking very deeply about things, once it goes into Sagittarius, we feel more confident, um, and this is happening on the 10th, uh, it's a time when we want to express ourselves, stand up for what we want. We're able to see a more clear path to getting it. Um, Mercury stays in uh, Sagittarius for not that long. It actually will move again. Mercury is just flying through the zodiac. That's why time feels like it's so speeded up and why our daily lives seem like they're very mo moving parts and hectic. Um, that's that Mercury in there. Remember, we're always learning. Um, that when Mercury is in, in Sagittarius, it's also a great time to take on new studies. If you've been thinking about going back to school for something, if you've been thinking about taking a new class or reading a new type of thing online or taking classes online for something, that's a great time to do it, middle to end of November. You're going to be much more clear on it. It's going to really expand your mind. It's going to change your thinking. It's a great time to bring something new in, to having to do with communication or learning. Um, and then that next day on Saturday, we've got November 11th, which is the 11th 11 activation. Now, what's 1111? Well, for me personally, 1111, whenever I see it, I know the universe is just patting me on the back and telling me you're in absolutely the right place, the right time, you're on the right path. For other people, maybe they've assigned a symbolism to 1111. Maybe it's, you know, your mom saying hello that's passed over or your dad, or maybe when you see 1111, it has a certain meaning for you. For me, 1111 is an extremely spiritual number. Um, I just noticed when I said that, we had 11 people uh, in, in the live count. It doesn't mean only 11 people are watching. It just means on that feed. And um, yeah, that's, that's my little sign. The universe has me exactly where I'm supposed to be in my little steampunk outfit. So when the 1111, November 11th, comes around every year, I get a little bit um, more spiritual that day. I make sure I meditate a little bit extra. I go to yoga. I do something. Because 1111 is an angel number, and just 1111, when you put it up, right, for me, it symbolizes doors, opportunity, opening. It's the spiritual doors of the universe opening. Um, so it's a great day to use it for manifesting, for kind of bringing in and drawing in the energy and of reality of whatever you really want to dream and, met and, and you know, um, manifest in your life. And... That brings us to a place of gratitude, and that's why 1111 is such a special number. It's a number that we need to honor because whatever 1111 signifies for you, you should honor that on that day, all right? And a lot of times people will say to me, I keep seeing 1111, what does it mean? There's a phenomenon that happens whenever we start to open spiritually, we'll keep seeing that number, and it's because it's the doors of spirituality opening for us. A Monday, um, November 13th, that is when the sun now leaves Scorpio. I mean, the sun is still in Scorpio for a few more days, but it opposes um, Uranus and Taurus. That Uranus and Taurus is an earth energy. It's a shake-up energy. It's like a rock and rolling type of energy. When the sun's opposing that, what does it mean in plain English? It means things are really unstable. That Monday, November 13th is a day I wouldn't be surprised if um, on earth maybe you see 
volcanoes or earthquakes, something earthly erupting. It's a very unstable energy. It can make us feel scattered. It can make us um, have surprises. Things that are out of the box will happen on a day like uh, November 13th, where you have the sun in Scorpio opposing Uranus and Taurus. So if you have something that you really need to focus on, a day you're supposed to do, give a speech, do an event, talk, may have an important conversation, I wouldn't do it on November 13th. That's a day where, you know, things get shook up. And the purpose of that usually is solutions, but it takes a while to get there. It's a day where we might feel a little spacey. Um, we feel scattered. Our energy is very scattered. It's not a great day to um, make changes. It's a day we'll want to make change, but it might frustrate us because we can't get there. We're all over the place. That's the energy. And believe it or not, that stays with us for several days. It could be like a week in either direction. That's November 13th. So if towards the middle of the month you start to feel scattered or you, like you can't focus, there's nothing wrong with you. It's the energy. You've got the sun illuminating Uranus, which is the planet of sun and unexpected change and shakeups, and it's in an earth sign. So around that November 13th time this month, that's going to be a real rock and roll in a few days. But also it's a great time to accomplish anything you have to that's hard and that you don't really want to do because there will be a lot of assertion. And that energy stays with us because on the 13th and 14th, um, we have a new moon in Scorpio and Mars is really in play for that first moon of the month, which is the new moon in Scorpio on November 13th and 14th. It's like in the nighttime then. Um, that coming on the heels of that sun and Uranian energy, which is the shakeup, the feeling, you know, kind of irritable and out of bounds and scattered. That saves us for a few days. And right in the middle of that, in the middle of the month, on the 13th, 14th, we've got this new moon in Scorpio, which is an energy that likes to expose anything that's hidden. So the middle of this month is really kind of a rocking and rolling time. You may feel really restless. You may feel very agitated, um, irritable. The best use of that energy is try and harness it to move something forward that you've been had, had stuck or you haven't had a lot of momentum with because that Mars is really aggressive. So if you can channel that aggression to be more assertive instead of angry or irritable or restless, you're really going to be using the type of energy that comes in for the best possible guidance you can. So um, just be aware, things that are hidden in that mid-month energy can erupt. If you're doing anybody you know, dirty, if you're doing a dirty business deal or you're cheating or you have a, a lie that's hidden, something you don't want to come out, you know, chances are that's when that energy is going to come out. And it'll be interesting to see how that plays out on the uh, political arena, right? So that energy around the mid-month with that Scorpio new moon for November, that's also an energy that will clear things. It will help you move stuck energy, but it's not going to do it gently. Like this isn't like a meditation where you're like, oh, I feel so good. No, it's like, whoa, what the heck just happened? That's that kind of energy. So moving on to the November energy, we're almost done. Saturday, November 18th, we've got Sun conjunct Mer Mars. That's the annual alignment when the Sun and Mars come together in the sky. This is fire. It's passion. It's motivation. If you did meet somebody in that Venus-Pluto trine in the beginning of the month, this is when you want to have the date. This is when you want to go for the romantic dinner or cook for somebody. This is like very fiery, very passionate. Um, the Sun and Mars are in Scorpio, which is an energy of passion. It can be a little bit obsessive, so you really want to make sure that you allow yourself that grounding in, you know, a beautiful energy. Don't go away to the other side. This also um, charges things up. It is a great time if you want to use that energy more for assertion. It's also a great time to write out your goals and make a plan, maybe even it's a little early, but make a plan for 2024, what you really want to accomplish. Because when the sun conjuncts Mars annually every year, it's an energy that really makes us think about moving forward, doing our goals. And this year, because it happens in Scorpio, it's a deep dive. It's bringing what's hidden to the surface. And when I look at energy like that, it's a great time to bring your hidden talents and hidden resources up and make a plan for them to bring them out into the universe in 2024. 
because you've got this beautiful energy of Mars that's, you know, that just this powerful, passionate, and in Scorpio, that's like a take no prisoners kind of energy. The lower octave of that is obsession and jealousy and possession, but the higher octave is somebody who's really a powerhouse, like a, a, a real like warrior. So it's a great time to insta unstick energy, move energy forward. For some, that can also be depleting because there's a lot of energy moving in the sky at that time. That's November 18th again. But um, I think if you harness the energy correctly, it's really a time when you can start to really figure out the goal for 2024 and you know, start sticking the flag in the ground for your momentum. Wednesday the 22nd, Sagittarius season begins and the sun goes into Sag and it's like, woohoo, yippee. It's so cool because that's when the energy really lightens up. Sagittarius is an energy for partying and twinkle and dazzle and glitter. And we finally start to move away somewhat from the heavy energy that we've been feeling, that Scorpio energy. You know, that time when we change the clocks and it's dark out. Sagittarius comes in just before Thanksgiving to really set the tone for the holiday season. It's social. It wants to get out and do things. It's creative. It cre craves more play and more joy. So welcome in that lighter energy. That's Wednesday the 22nd um, before Thanksgiving. And that is an energy that also brings with it almost like a fresh air where you're going to have new ideas and new concepts. So it's a really nice day the day before Thanksgiving. Um, Thanksgiving itself can be a little bit of a challenging day. The best use of the energy on Thanksgiving is to make a list, start checking things off, get things done. You know, you can make progress that day in the energy, even though it's a little bit hard, it's challenging. We feel pressure on Thanksgiving to get things done. It's, you know, sometimes we feel that way anyway. And so that's not a great energy to have for that day, but it might feel restrictive. But the best advice I can give you in this energy is that there is progress that can be made. It just dinner may go on late or, or, you know, you may have a morning where people are canceling or somebody's bringing somebody and you have to set another place and it gets very frustrating. But, um, we've got sun squaring Saturn is the energy. Saturn remembers that limitation, that authority. So we want to shine and we want to be bright and we want everything a certain way. But then Saturn comes in and like, tightens things a little bit. It's the dad that comes in the room and says, stop having the pillow, pillow fight, go get dressed. So we may want to really be joyful and have fun, but there will be some limitations. Could even be, you know, somebody comes to Thanksgiving dinner and they're a sourpuss and they just limit everybody, you know, but um, that's the energy for Thanksgiving. So it's a good energy to get things done. Then as we approach the end of the month, Friday the 24th, Mars enters Sagittarius and it stays there until 2024. So that's another lightning that heavy Mars and Scorpio energy, that take no prisoners, that warlike, deep, deep diving energy, bringing atrocities and repulsive things out from the dirt. We all know what's going on in the real world. That's that Mars and Scorpio. Um, Mars and Scorpio also is assertion. It's somebody who's very much a, um, a warrior. But Mars now moves into Sagittarius. So after that heavy, deep dive in Scorpio, we've got lighter energy. We end the month with a much lighter energy. We can see clarity. Um, we see the, the growth that we've done when we had all that scorpion energy and we're deep diving in it. And um, it's good because we can really see where we've grown in the last two months and start putting that to use. So it should really be a lighter holiday season. And then we finish out the month on Saturday the 25th, Mars squares Saturn, which is the same square that um, the sun just did because the sun and Mars were together, remember. And so now we've got more Mars energy. But the good thing is it's going into Sagittarius. So it's a little bit lighter. Um, this peaks on November 25th. Um, it lasts a week either way. It's a push-pull dynamic. When Mars squares Saturn, Mars wants to go, wants to speed down the bridge at 130 miles an hour. And Saturn's the dad who puts the, arm, the hand on the arm and says, no, you can't speed, son. So it's that push-pull. We want to go, go, go and have all this great assertion and this great fun and joy and energy. But authority comes in and Saturn comes in and says, oh, no, no, no. You have to be good. You have to learn your lessons. So that's that energy. And that's going to stay with us for a week. Comes in, it actually exacts on the 25th of November, but it's with us a week before and a week after. So we finish out the month with that. Um, be methodical. You know, Mars wants us to go fast. Saturn wants us to slow down. It's a push-pull dynamic. The best way 
to work with that energy is be methodical, have patience, make lists, check things off. All right. It's going to be a restless energy. Um, you're going to butt heads with people because you want to go, go, go. Uh, there'll be a lot of protests, a lot of escalations that we finish the month out, out with, a lot of tempers rise in energy like that. So just know that. Um, it's challenging. Squares are challenging. They're a tension, they're a conversation of tension, but we find our most growth with squares. So use the energy to make progress with difficult tasks. And then the last thing that happens at the end of the month is on November 27th. We've got, which is a Monday, I'll be here talking about that. We have the Gemini full moon. And the Gemini full moon brings us a mixed bag. That's on the 27th on a Monday. It's a lot of energy. It's beautiful, but it's a little bit somber. Um, it's communication. It's anything to do with um, endings, beginnings. Uh, in the full moon in Gemini, it's going to be a focus on attention of what makes you feel confident and certain. Um, it's going to be anything to do with communication, but in Gemini, that's our monkey brain can take over. So make a plan around that 1127 time that you want to keep your thoughts in check. It's a good time to go out in nature, meditate, uh, journal, because our monkey brains are going to be boop, 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 on the 27th. And that full moon is going to bring in a lot of that type of energy where people just want to talk, 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 and talking about nothing and going in circles and, you know, all kinds of scatterbrain type stuff. All right. So now we're going to go to other stuff. Let me look at my beautiful Zenkuda community on here. I love you all so much. So, and thank you. Trick or treat, everybody. I got my little steampunk stuff on. Um, this has like the cutest dress that goes with it and everything, but I know you guys can't see that. Happy Monday, Marie. Good evening, Janine. I hope you're all going to dress up a little bit tomorrow. Um, hey, Monica. Got Jennifer Califati watching. Anita Mina, how you doing, sweetie? Chloe, I've got uh, Cheryl Silverman. Hey, Cheryl, yo, hi, how you doing? Oh, she's in such a great place. So I got to tell you guys all about, um, oh, you're a Gemini. Okay. So, and Anne, Iva, I got to tell you guys all about, I did this retreat for my company um, that I, you know, my earthbound life. I merged my earthbound and my spiritual life last Friday. It was great. So I got 30 real estate agents in a room and I zen them. <laughs> I zen -cooted them. I like did meditation and Reiki and we walked all around nature. It was so beautiful. And I have to tell you, I'm still getting phone calls from people. A couple of ladies said she, they slept that night with like a baby for the first time in 10 years. Reiki is the best thing, I'm telling you. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that retreat idea and that type of event out to the public. So watch for your emails and watch um, the show for the next date that we're going to be doing that. And also, I wanted to tell you how everything just came together. And so as we end 2023... I really want to compel everyone to make a plan to really be in alignment with what you really want to do. And what do I mean by that? Well, who are you? This is what I talked about in the retreat on Friday. Who are you? And, you know, get a little journal and journal and ask yourself, who are you? Who am I? You know, are you the same person you were a year or two ago, a year ago? You're not, right? We all constantly grow and we morph and we you know, chain and all kinds of different things. I'm not who I was when I first started this podcast four years ago. I'm not who I was last week. You know, I'm constantly evolving. And we're constantly evolving in creation and the light of creator. But what happens is we have these operating systems that we put together or we started to do when we were a different person. Like maybe you have a business and your operating system, the way you work your business is the way you always thought your business should be, but you started it 10 years ago and you're a different person. So your business no longer reflects you. Or maybe the relationship you're in, same thing, right? You started a relationship six years ago and you were a certain person and now you're a totally different person and the relationship just isn't cutting it anymore. Well, the reason why that happens is because we're trying to function in the frequency that we currently are by using an operating system that we were in. So we have to keep changing up the operating system. A perfect example is like Bobby in the studio here. I've been here two years at this studio and nothing is the same as it was two years ago. Because Bobby keeps growing and changing and he keeps changing us and our shows and our backgrounds and what she does for us and all these things. 
because he's keeping his operating system up to date with who he is. And you'll see that a lot in creative people. But what happens is we get so overwhelmed with life and our day to day that our creativity gets stuck and stifled. And we find ourselves trying to operate in a system that maybe was great for us two or three years ago, but ain't good now. Like maybe you decided to write a book four years ago and you had a certain manifesto in mind and a certain story in mind, but now you've learned so much and you've grown so much that like you wouldn't write the same book. I'll give you an example. One of the, one of the funniest things that happens to me is I'm in process of transcribing all of my um, blogs. I have like six years worth of blogs on a website that now is not public anymore because we're switching it all over to Zencuda.com. And I go and I read the blogs in order to decide which ones I want to put on the, the website. And every time I read one of the blogs that I wrote like five, six years ago when I was first on the spiritual path, it's so hard for me not to change it. And like, oh, wait, I, I can do that better. Or I don't really think, I think it's this way now. And I'm like, no, 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 no. The whole point of the blog was to show the evolution, the osmosis, the transmutation of the spiritual journey. So if you do it from your perspective now and start editing blogs from six years ago to reflect who you are now, it kind of defeats the point. By the same token, I'm not going to write a blog now that's on the same wavelength of the blogs I wrote six years ago. So how are we operating? Are you operating with a system in your, in your relationships, in your family, in your goals, in your hopes, your dreams, your wishes, in your businesses, in your business life, in your careers that is reflective of who you are now? And if you're not, and you're using an operating system that's old or decayed or stale, well then, who are you becoming? Because unless the operating system that we use reflects our frequency and what we're capable of and what our hopes and dreams and wishes are presently, then we're not in alignment and that's why we're dissatisfied, we're cranky, we're stressed, we are disjointed, we are disconnected because we're not in alignment with the operating system we're telling ourselves to do every day. And that's why we don't want to do any of it. So just kind of you know, unpack that, think about that. We're going to put the number up if anybody wants to call in and talk about that a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to talk about how you get an alignment, some alignment for you guys. But um, I got to tell you, think about your operating system. How are you operating? You know, I recently just renewed a relationship with somebody um, where we recommitted to something and we realized, you know what, there's things here that really ain't working anymore. Let's completely recommit to doing things a completely different way. All right. Is that call? That call is not for me. Um, my, my tone sounds different. Yeah. So think about that. And especially in relationships, when we've got Venus going into Libra, that's what it's all about. Remember before I said we have some dates in November where power dynamics really have the ability to uh, reorient themselves, right? Well, that's not going to happen unless we reorient our own operating system. So make sure your orientation is based on who you are now, not the goal you had five years ago. Like the circumstance, the thing you want may be the same, but the way you're going to go about getting it may be totally different, right? Um, the way I would uh, maybe writing is, was a good example or maybe even doing the show. The way I do the show now as opposed to four years ago is completely different. It's a completely different show than what I used to do. I'm a, I'm, my frequency is different. My energy is different. So I don't know if anybody wants to like comment or call in and talk about um, how they now kind of had an aha moment and realize there's some things they need to change in the way they're operating or approaching or their mindset about life. What I refer to as the operating system is really your mindset. Like where are you coming from? Where do you want to go? You can't have a, a, an old mindset for new energy is basically as simple as I can say. We need to put our goggles on boop, boop, and really look at where our clarity is. I know I have friends out there thinking I'm hysterical tonight. <laughs> so does anybody want to call in and say hello? <laughs> I'm feeling lonely. Hey, Bobby, can we put the number on the screen? I lost my producer. So if you are out of alignment and you know you start journaling and you're asking yourself, 
Um, so who am I? And what am I becoming? Here's some questions that will give you an insight into where you're out of alignment or where the energy is stale in your life and causing you stress. One of the best questions you can ask is, when was the last time, I used this in the retreat, when was the last time that you said yes when you really wanted to say no? When was the last time you said yes when you really wanted to say no? And how'd that make you feel? And where did you feel that energy in your body? Like, did you feel an oots in your tummy? Did you get a backache? Did it make your stomach tense up or your heart tense up or your shoulders tense up? Because you're still carrying that energy. And sometimes we say yes because we feel like we have an obligation. We don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. We don't want to be a bad person. We just, you know, it could be anything. Like your boss asks you to do something extra and you say yes, but you really want to tell your boss, hey, you can't pile any more work on me unless you're increasing my pay. Or maybe your partner says to you, can you go do this errand for me because I'm really busy at work and you're busy too and you really don't have time to do it, but you go and do it. And the whole time you're doing it, you're just saying to yourself, why the heck do I have to do this for this person? Like they don't take responsibility. Well, all that energy, that stuck energy, that, that dissatisfaction, it's all in you. It's, it doesn't just go away when you finish that task. So think about when do you say yes when you really want to say no? And where is that stuck? Because when we say what we mean and we mean what we say, we're liberated. We live a much freer life. And what happens is the energy that we wasted on saying yes when we really wanted to say no now gets a whole new place to be. And we can use it to bring our lives forward and get our goals going. So that's why we need a new operating system. If we're still operating from saying yes when we want to say no because we feel obligated or maybe when we were a little girl, our mother raised us to be someone who is always very polite. And so we don't know how to say, I don't want to do this. We need to find our voice and find our words. There's that power dynamic. So you see how the energy in November is going to play out for all of this. So get ahead of the energy and use the energy to really make those changes. Where do you need to bring new vitality in your life? So now the next question I asked, and this also is from the retreat, was where in your life are you responsible for someone's life force? For instance, maybe you run home, cut your day short or cut a good time short to run home to feed the cat or the dog, but yet you haven't eaten all day. Or maybe you run around to bring groceries to the neighbor or mom or whoever because they aren't capable of going to the grocery store, but you skipped your own lunch to do it. Like, where are you responsible for someone else's life force, but you don't feed yourself? Literally. And then how does your body tell you it needs preservation? Because that's really what this energy is about. It's about self-preservation. We say yes when we really want to say no because we don't want the conflict. We think that we're going to protect ourselves by doing that. But we really harm ourselves more than if we had just said, no, you know, that really doesn't fit into my schedule. I'm sorry, but I don't want to do it. I'm sorry, I'm not available for that today. Maybe Saturday. How much better would you feel? And what if that secret you're keeping that you really don't want to babysit all day or you really don't want to um, go bring groceries to somebody today or you really don't want to run that errand because you're exhausted, how would you really feel if that secret was exposed and you really didn't want to do it? You'd probably feel a lot better than you do doing it. So the point to all this is don't waste your energy. Stop wasting your energy. You're wasting your energy with self-protection mechanisms in an operating system that is no longer who you are. And that's why you have to say what you mean and mean what you say. Learn to say yes when you want to say yes. Learn to say no when you want to say no. That's the very first step to putting yourself in alignment. Because when we say yes to something that we maybe wanted to, that we, when we say yes to something that maybe we said no to, like for instance, in the polarization of the energy, Maybe your friends are all going out Friday night for drinks and you really want to go. But you know you have to bring mom groceries or you have to run home to feed the dog or you got to pick the kids up off the bus and you can't go to happy hour and you're really ticked off about it. 
Well, maybe the new operating system is you find a sitter or you make mom's day for groceries a different day or you get a dog person to come in and feed the dog at once a month. So you have to put in a new operating system for who you are now. And the, I'm using very um, surface, very light-hearted type of situations, but it could be something really deep. You know, it could be something that's so ingrained in your operating system that you don't feel confident or powerful enough to say what you mean and mean what you say. But I hope that you are all inspired by some of these questions that you liberate yourself to really be in a space where you don't waste your energy anymore on those things and you really can step into who you are and who you are now. So I'm going to just check our comments here. Um, Cheryl says she loves my sense of humor. I'm hysterical. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sometimes my friends say, my God, you're so hysterical. I don't know if they mean that literally or just like in a humorous way. But anyway, um, so yep. So thanks for all those wonderful dates. Took notes. Great. I want you to take notes. And you can play the show back if you missed some of the notes. I definitely, that's why I do the monthly rundown because I know it seems like a lot at once. But the reason why I love doing that is because you can replay the show and say, wait a second, I know there was energy coming in. What did Georgia say? Um, Anne says, in the two years she's been watching Soul Space, I see how much you have grown. It gets better and stronger every show. Oh, thank you. I have to send you up hearts, Anne. That was such a sweet, sweet thing to say. Oh, I love that. We're going to have more and more guests on too, which will really make the energy better. Um, and um, Marie says, the first no is the hardest, but comes easier the next time. That is so true. So true. You know who I had a big problem saying no to in my life was my sisters and my family, my siblings and my family, because I'm the youngest of five. And I always tell people, I, I, ha I have two brothers and two sisters. And I always tell people, you don't understand. I grew up with three mothers and three fathers. <laughs> and didn't know which one to please. So I had a really hard time saying no to my brothers and sisters because I just felt like the self-protection mechanism I had in place was don't rock the boat, just do what they say because they're going to like take it out on you or it's always going to be your fault or when something goes wrong or you're going to, you know, they're going to pick on you if you don't, you know. I mean, I was operating from a six-year-old system when you're six years old, not an adult woman system, right? So when I started to really operate from who I am now and learn to choose my words and say, no, I really don't want to go there, or no, I think this year I'm going to be going to Thanksgiving someplace else. Thank you so much for the invite or whatever it might be. Suddenly I just felt so much more liberated, like I was really stepping up for myself because the self-protection mechanisms I had in place, they kept me a child. They kept me unassertive in my family dynamic. They kept me from having relationships on an equal basis. And when I started to stand up and actually assert my identity and personality, then they really saw me for the person I was. And it was the relationships improved. So don't be afraid of doing that. Um, oh, thank you, Anne. I love you. I love everybody out there in the Zencuda community. And if you think there are people who could benefit from our words tonight, share the show, share it on your space, um, all that stuff. So if anybody wants to call in, it's 516 945 9099. So for anybody who's a Scorpio, just had a birthday. Now we're going to Sag, Sag time, Sag birthdays. Happy birthday to all our Sagis. Um, that is an energy of Sagittarius always wants to be out in the world. They love the party. But in an energy like this, if you are a Sagittarius, it can really affect you because we've got Mercury there. Venus is going to go in there later on in the month. I mean, yeah, it's just flying through. So Mars is there. So you really want to make sure that when you are out and about, you can get like very exuberant and maybe go too far or overindulge. So really make sure you've got the Uber, you've got the designated driver, or you've got, you know, someone who's really keeping you in check because Sagis in this energy can be like, woohoo, you know, like kind of like, it's like a Tigger energy, like woohoo, right, Tiggers? So like, you know, you have the springs, that's how Sagis get. Now, I'm speaking from experience because I'm a Sagittarius rising. And everybody knows there's a side of me that give me an inch and I'm going to take a mile. <laughs> I'm the one who's like, let's scale the fence, you know. So and you, thank God I have very good friends who like always pull my coattail back and say, no, Georgia, sit down. Thank you, God. So you want to really temper yourself in this energy if you're a Sagittarius or you have Sag in your chart anywhere. Um, really true. So if you are feeling misaligned, how do you get yourself in alignment? Well, there's some basic ways that you can do that. Um, one is yoga. 
And the type of yoga that I am a practitioner of and also a teacher of is Kripalu yoga, which is a very compassionate type of yoga. Nobody's standing on their head or sitting in meditation for nine hours, ramrod back straight. It's a very forgiving, compassionate yoga that's just meant to move energy. I highly recommend. There's some Kripalu yoga teachers online, things like that. If you're on Long Island, Long Island Yoga in Babylon Village is the best studio in the world. Love it, love it, love it there. Um, because yoga moves energy and what happens when you're trying to find your authentic self and really step into your power, yoga will help you move out what's stagnant so you have more room to grow your power. Um, and when you feel emotionally and physically well, your work is more efficient, just your productivity in the world is more efficient. Meditation is another way to really get in touch with who you are now because when you meditate, you're bringing yourself into relaxation. And when you are in a state of relaxation, you have instantaneous healing, both phys physically and mentally in your body. So meditation could be anything, even just, you know, going for a swim or a drive or just, you know, putting on beautiful music and just thinking about things in an introspective way. The other th couple of things that'll help you is mindfulness. Mindfulness is really being observant and just paying attention on purpose, like really just breathing and coming down into the moment and doing that throughout your day so that you really become fully present and enjoying your life more. That's a great way to find out how you really feel about things and check in with yourself. And, you know, how am I feeling right now? Is my stomach tense? Do I need to breathe? Are my feet flat on the floor? Am I feeling anxious? Where is it coming from? What part of my body do I feel it in? This is all ways to get to know yourself and really find out who you are. Nature, very important to commune with nature when you're trying to um, really bring your energy into a flow and alignment for peak potential because nature grounds you, relaxes you. It also um, fortifies the fact that there's an energy that's much more powerful than you are. And if you tap into that in order to move your life forward, there's no stopping you. And then Reiki, I highly recommend because Reiki is an instantaneous healing. It's an energy that allows space for us to um, really heal whatever is both physically and mentally very deeply in the energetic field of the body. So usually after a Reiki, you'll have a breakthrough or an aha moment. Really great for that. And then the other part that's very important is connection. And that was why I started the soul space because when we connect with others and we connect on a level of compassion, feeling our heart space, that brings us into a place of full potential and really makes us shine and our light come in brighter. So when we're in that space, we really find what, what our purpose is, where we really want to go forward in our life. It just comes naturally. We expand our capacity for love and that, that energy. And journaling. Journaling is a great way to really think, to really find out what your brain is thinking. Sometimes you'll sit with pen and paper and just start writing and everything just comes together. Um, so does anybody have any comments about the energy or about the um, astrology or anything? You know, just put them in the comments if you want. I got a few more minutes left on the show and I'll answer your comments. Um, so November is going to be an, an, a, a month of a lot of change, but not like super harsh change. Mostly it's going to be change that you'll see in relationship. So really try and observe what comes in and what also needs to fall away for, for you. Because if you can observe it without judgment and without a story, without an operating system, you're going to really be able to partake of whatever comes. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. Cheryl's saying how much she enjoyed the retreat. Oh, see that? You were present and enjoyed every moment of the open house. That was great. Cheryl's a realtor, too. That's so cool because I always tell people in business, if you can drop down into mindfulness, you're going to be so much more... Uh, productive in your business and relationships too. You know, one of the things I've committed to is um, I have a partner in my life and I just small nuances. And we learn that in yoga. Sometimes just the way that we put our hand changes the whole posture. So small nuances sometimes. One of the things that I recommitted to is when my partner is talking to me, I try and face them now and make eye contact and just look squarely at them and give that undivided attention. You know, if I did the show and I was kind of like this, and you know, like, you guys would be like, yeah, what the heck is she doing? But when I look straight in the camera and I tell you all how much I love you, really affects you guys a lot. So uh, 
Try and just make those small little nuances in your life. It's a great month to do that. Bring in that beautiful energy of Scorpio going into Sagittarius. That wonderful, joyful feeling that we get during the holidays will really come through. Um, and just small nuances like that. If you're out with customers and clients, just really, you know, take the pause. Body language, you know, relax. Sit back in the chair and really zero in. Ask them, how was your day today? What did you do? You know, and, and be fully present. Doing that changes everything in life. So I did bring cards today. I'm just going to pull cards for the general collective. I'm going to pull three cards. And we'll see where we're at in the world. Because, gosh, there has been so much energy coming around, hasn't there? So I hope you all like my steampunk outfit. We've got a witch in the studio, which is awesome. <laughs> I love it when adults dress for Halloween. <laughs> all right. So shuffle in, shuffle in, shuffle in. Okay. So what do we got? Spirit, bring us in some energy for cards for the collective. What can we expect this week in the global fronts? We've got strength, the lion card. And if you notice the lion card, if we get a camera on the table, Bob, the lion card is um, the infinity symbol over the lion's head. I don't know if you can see it. So I think the energy might l um, lighten up a little bit um, globally. We've got the strength card, which is the lion and that infinity symbol over his head, which is also the Leo card. And the lion card is very symbolic of coming into our own strength, like I was just saying about power dynamics. So this is an energy where almost everything we've been talking about in the show confirming for us that we, anything is possible. We just have to kind of use our own inner natural resources to find it. When you really zero in on the energy of um, the lion card, it is a lion tamer pulling the lion's mouth open. And he's not taming the lion with brute force. Might is not right in this card. What the Leo card really shows us is the love of power cannot be more powerful than the power of love. And so when you ever see someone training an animal, and in this picture, the lion tamer, the lion tamer does that by compassion and love and, and caring and empathy till the lion trusts him and then he allows him to open the jaw. This card is symbolic of compassion really winning over anything that's might and brute force. And then we've got the knight of wands in an upside down position. The Knight of Wands is fire, it's battle, it's warrior. The fact that this is in an upside down position leads me to believe that the energy is weakening. So this leads me to think that, you know, this is not a political statement, but it leads me to think that, you know, draw your own conclusion, but especially with things that are going on right now globally, that a lot of the might is right mentality is going to be won over by compassion and empathy. And that might is right, that warrior energy, that harsh warlike energy will lose out. And then the third card that we got is the card of balance of all things being in right action, which is really beautiful and hopeful for me. I'm going to pick a card to confirm. Oh my gosh, this is great. We've got the most beautiful card in the deck, the Ten of Cups, which is a card of hope, union, harmony, soul space, a beautiful card to end the show on. I really think maybe we could be a little hopeful about some of the global situations that are coming in now. We might see a little bit of energy coming in to stabilize things, which would be really nice. I don't know what the long haul prospect is, but what I can tell you is that this card spread is a spread that just told us that we all need to keep our vibration very high and stay in love. Because if we can send love out to all the discord that's going on into the world, we can really help a lot of people. Thank you so much for tuning into the Soul Space. I am Georgia Rose. The community is called Zencuda. You can find us on Zencuda on YouTube. Zencuda.com is our website. Zencuda Soul Space on Facebook and Zencuda Official on Instagram. I am here every Monday night at 7 p.m. And you can see replays of the show on Spotify and also on channel uh, 115 at noon on Fridays on Optimum Television. Thanks so much. I'll be back here in the Soul Space next Monday. Bye-bye.